I don't know whether it is still running or not also. This completely uh, internet system, first system problem, then power cut problem. So guys, we start with uh, the storage. So actually, yeah, we already seen in our uh, computer hardware, we have seen about a, a hard disk, hard disk partition and file system. Okay, in a hard disk, we discussed about ID type of hard disk, SATA, hard disk, SPATA, hard disk. Okay, ID means integrated device electronic. In a starting hard disk connection, they use ID interface. That is AT pin interface they used. Earlier interface is AT pin connection. Still, we are using ID based chipset only. The chip is like a ID, whether it is SATA, PATA, whatever the name it is, it is ID base. Okay, the base is ID. There is only two types one is ID, second one is SCSI. Second one is SCSI. -E -E okay, ID and SCSI. -E so, ID is a regular desktop, any desktop laptop is ID type. But this IDE technology, so there is little, little changes. There is a new technology came up that is called ATA, Advanced Technology Attachment. So in ATA, so it is all about uh, how to connect, how speed of, of data transmission from your motherboard to your hard disk, from your motherboard to your hard disk. Means one device to another device, we are transmitting data, right? We are reading, writing, loading data right so what is that speed speed between your motherboard interface to the connection between your motherboard to your hard disk so that is advanced technology attachment that attachment name came like that different technology the so world in days like a ide pata type id and pata both are pin type connections Parallel advanced technology attachment. It's a 40 pin ribbon cable. Next one is serial attach serial advanced technology attachment. It's a seven pin single cable. Okay. So SATA when after PATA SATA came into market and uh, SATA people start liking not liking. It is of course PATA hard disk PATA interfaces. SATA based motherboards are uh, slowly, slowly they're reducing. They introduce SATA uh, kind of stuff so slowly in the market. So why it is reduced? So of course SATA is a uh, much faster than PATA, and in a SATA also there is a uh, versions are there SATA one, SATA two, SATA three. The latest version is SATA three. It's uh, around uh, six Gbps uh, data uh, transmission speed. Of course, we have a SSD type of uh, storages also there. So right, and that is called a NAND memory. We are already discussed that one. So SSD is a NAND memory. And for SSD also, there is a two type of interface. SATA interface, M.2, M.2, NVMV, M.2 data type of interfaces. Okay, as compared to M.2, interface is much faster which is integrated on your motherboard so faster data transmission is there read and write speed is also normal hard disk you have a splinter motor a plotter kind of stuff data store in a plotters kind of stuff in ssd data store in a chips it's lightweight and all so that's compulsory normal hard disk and ssd differences go back to your old slides and all please read it one PC hardware, it is there. If possible, somewhere I may return, but you can see it is 2.5 inch laptop drive, SATA PATA drive, how the pin connectors are there, and SATA PATA uh, 3.5 desktop hard disk, ribbon cables, ID ribbon cables, and it is SATA data cable. Okay. So, this is uh, basically your regular hard disk. What is this SCSI? What is this SCSI? Guys, in our motherboard, in our motherboard, based on our ID interface, we can connect maximum four disks. 
how many days we can able to connect maximum four hard days we can able to connect not only hard days okay either this is a hard day uh, motherboard so either you use pata type of interface or sata type of interface you can connect four drives either for hard disk or for cd ram or dvds or uh, two hard disk or uh, two cd rams or one hard disk three cd rams like that maximum four you cannot connect more than four maximum four devices we can able to connect it either hard disk or cd rams or combination we can connect it in ide type so we have a ribbon cable like this it's a golden type it's a ribbon cable each ribbon we can connect two drives like this each ribbon okay so two connectors are there totally four we can able to connect this is one point what type of devices we can connect hard disk or cd ram or dvds we can connect it and type of devices and maximum four only we can able to connect the second point is for example one of the disk is having problem means this disk is uh, not working this disk is not working so what i have to do it how to remove this disk or how to insert a new disk how to replace the disk anyone knows you want to remove the disk remove the device hard disk or maybe or a ram or maybe a uh, on board anything you are connected a graphic card or cpu anything you want to remove or you want to reinsert you want to reinsert or just insert or just insert you want to remove it means you are removing or reinsert or insert or add whatever the word you use it you are adding or removing or inserting or reinserting or changing or changing means replacing what are the word you can use it you can use it for whatever you want to do it in our computer first important is power down power off first of all you have to shut down your computer power off your computer remove all power connections means if you are using a laptop a desktop You are using a desktop. You power off your system and backside cable is there. Remove that cable. If you are using a laptop, remove the charger and remove the battery. So remove all power connected or all power resources. Okay. All power resources, all power connections. Anybody can use it. Remove all power. Then you can able to replace remove add anything you can able to okay once connection done okay once connected or uh, your work is done you want to remove or connected water you eat you done it okay then you can able to power on then connect all your power resources power on and we have to check it right so generally that's what happens okay so this much thing you have to do it this is what we call it as a cold swap cold swap what is cold swap when system is running you cannot able to add or remove or replace the device can't add new one you can't remove the uh, connected one. You cannot replace the one uh, device when system is 
running. So that is called a cold swap. Okay. Yes, understand what is cold swap? Yes, W A P. What is cold swap? Same. Everybody is hungry. At least I will I will uh, stop at uh, a small point. Uh, at least uh, up to a scazi to this point. I don't go to this one. At least please stop, guys. Now yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Nowadays, everybody uh, chasing for a uh, something very bigger things. Like the people are talking only big words like a cloud and uh, AL, ML kind of stuff. Even they don't know what it is. Point is, all these things based on very simple. That's why in my PPT also I've written here like this. It is in a AWS is a cloud service, right? In AWS, you have a EBS, Elastic Block Storage. It is nothing but a block storage. It is providing a block storage. What is a block storage? Concept of block storage is simply a, there is a disk space attaching to your server directly. It's not like you are storing a data like you can see. Um, I, I will show you uh, some open by folder. Yeah, it's a folder is open. See it is. It's a folder. It contains the data. This is called a file level access. There is a folder. Okay, we are accessing the data. That is a file level access. Okay. P I S K M G M T dot M S. This is hard disk. The hard disk is attached. Of course, in my PC it is physically attached. In my PC it is a physically attached. Okay hard disk is attached so i can see a hard disk directly i can see there is a hard disk this type of access i'm accessing a a certain disk space directly okay so first point that's the first layer is i need a hard disk right that i'm accessing a, a hard disk a disk or a, a disk space from my pc that is a block level storage block level storage okay you have a server server want to store some data server want a some data storage is required like 100 gb 200 gb 500 gb is required so you create a one block of storage from your uh, central storage and we are attaching to server the server think there is a new hard disk is attached directly but Original it is stored in different place, but it think there is a hard disk is attached. So it is showing like this only. This is called a block level storage. Okay. In AWS, this kind of block level storage service called a EBS. Okay. Of course, you have a block and inside you can store the data. That is called a file level storage. You access a, a shared folder. If you access a shared folder, it's a file level access. Like because you're accessing files directly. You're not attaching a drive. You're not attaching a, a hard disk array. You're not attaching any drive here. You're directly accessing files. Means it is a file level storage. Okay. So you see, these are all that point only I'm trying to say. So again, I'm trying to explain what is a cold swappable when system is running. You cannot attach or detach or replace any device that is called a cold swappable. Okay. Now, what is this SCSI? Now, a cold swappable means is there we have a hot swappable. What is hot swap? Hot swap means when system is running, you can attach or detach. You know why USB is highlighted? Your USB pen drive, USB external hard disk. 
USB keyboard, USB mouse, okay? USB Bluetooth devices. I'm using a Bluetooth, uh, uh, what it is, it's a mouse, okay? So why USB more popular? It is hot swappable. When system is running, you can attach, you can detach. So no problem. Okay, you can attach a device, you can detach a device. Example of hot swap is USB drives, USB pen drives, USB keyboard, USB mouse. You know, keyboard, PS by two keyboards also there. PS by two. Uh, uh, keyboard is also there. Mouse is also there. You know what it is? You have a desktop, you have a PS by 2 keyboard and uh, you, you have to connect the PS by 2 keyboard when system is off condition. Okay, then you start automatically keyboard will be senses and you can work on it. In while you are working, you want to replace the keyboard. You replace the new PS by two keyboard, another keyboard you replace. It won't work. It may may not work. Or maybe you are already started a computer. Keyboard is not attached. Now you attach a PS by two keyboard. It won't work. But in USB, you didn't attach any keyboard. You just start a computer. Computer is started already and you connect with the USB keyboard. So it works. Okay, so difference is PS by 2, even though it is an external connection, still it is called swappable. Only we can able to, PS by 2, only it will be recognized in a restart or a, in a shutdown mode, means you shut down a computer, connect the keyboard and start, then only it will recognize. Okay, so hot swappables are not like that, we can ready to access. So these are the uh, one more point I told. So normal hard disk, Normal our uh, SATA, SATA connections, maximum four disk types only it will support. Four disk drives only it will support. Either it is hard disk drives or CD or DVD. And it is a cold swappable. And it is a cold swappable. Only two points I added. So what is the SCSI? Small computer system interface. So guys see this one. This is a SCSI adapter. You can Google it, you can search in a Google also. What is a, a SES SCSI uh, adapter board? Okay. SCSI, so this is SCSI adapter. Okay. So this is a SCSI adapter. We can connect to this SCSI adapter, both external and internal. It is purely depends upon your SCSI adapter. It is depends upon your SCSI adapter, okay? Both external and internal also, we can able to connect it. So what we can able to connect it? We can connect different type of devices, hard disk, CD-ROM, scanners, printers, we can connect it. But those devices are not a, just a hard disk or CD-ROM. SCSI hard disk, separate hard disk. SCSI hard disk are there. SCSI hard disk like this. Okay, it's look like normal hard disk only. That RPM and other few futures connections that uh, there is a pin configuration is also there. Like this master slave configuration connectivity. Okay, connectivity configuration is different. So earlier days there is a PATA type interface, ID type of interface. Okay, ribbon cables are there. Okay, so SCSI hard disk, SCSI CD-ROM, SCSI printers, SCSI scanners are there earlier. SCSI is a hot swappable. SCSI is hot swappable. What is a hot swappable? When system is running, you can able to connect or disconnect the device. Okay. You can connect number of disk drives can able to connect number of disk drives. In olden days, we have a SCSI. We have a SCSI. So the SCSI hard disk are a parallel for parallel interfaces like this kind of interfaces. 
parallel attached storage okay like a pata type of interfaces are there in earlier days we are using pata type of interfaces are there for a scsi drive same scsi hard disk sas hard disk also came same hard disk sas type of hard disk came that is serial attached earlier scsi is pata attached but pata parallel attached scsi is the people use parallel attached scsi type of interface means there's a parallel port parallel interface pin interfaces next version is sas type means serial attached scsi storages it means it's the same hard disk only attached will changes sas okay uh, it is showing almost uh, same but it not showing any uh, our interface in in generally in generally nowadays we are using iscsi we are all using iscsi the scsi the scsi is this is a interface is then a small computer system interface okay it is the name came from this interface only it is a direct uh, um, motherboard interface directly it is connected to your uh, server motherboard it directly connects to your server motherboard it connected to your server motherboard okay, the device is directly connected to your server motherboard it is showing different motherboards so it is this kind of device is connected directly to on motherboard this is the sata ports this is ide ports or a pata ports it is okay what sir it is this device is connected directly these adapters are connected directly to on motherboard from motherboard through ribbon cables the devices are connected or interfaces which is connected total picture is not coming okay okay so it means it is a, a connected to my, a server a server hardware directly built in server so we need a, a separation so we don't want to de depends upon the server uh, running on the server connected to the server motherboard we people don't like it it's, it's, it's not we don't go to that so i want a separate what so here it is ice cuzzy box is there it is nothing but a, a storage bay ice cuzzy means internet cuzzy ice cuzzy so all our diagrams only no direct pictures okay it is a box like a structure it contains a motherboard and uh, internally some basic uh, certain application means some kernel based application is running inside there is a small uh, application is there for a user for a connectivity purpose there is internally built in application or a operating system it is there for connectivity purpose and it has its own uh, directly it is connected to uh, network directly it is connected to network so not required it's not depends upon any uh, servers this not depends upon any uh, servers directly okay it is directly connected to lan network and there is where is this diagram you can see this is the iscsi devices are directly connected to a lan switch okay if you want to access the storage from the iscsi there is a iscsi target servers are there what is this servers will do so it will create a storage space in the iscsi and uh, and it will assign to the server so in the machine you have to go to 
iSCSI initiator, even it is there from Windows 8, Windows 10 also, we have iSCSI initiator. For example, think like that. There is a iSCSI uh, um, storage, iSCSI storage base there. Through my storage server, I created a some disk space, like 100 GB or 200 GB uh, disk space I created in iSCSI uh, storage bay. And that is uh, our target. And uh, it is assigned to my laptop. It is assigned to my laptop based on my laptop MAC address or IP address, name of my laptop. It is assigned to me. So I go to iSCSI initiator. In this one, I will tell this target name, means this server name, a storage server name, I, I, I will put name and ask a quick connect. So from my PC, request go to, request go to the iSCSI server and it checks what are the devices, what are the disk devices or what are the storage is assigned for this particular machine based on my MAC address or IP address, so these are all for this machine and give this disk to it. So it is attached to me directly to my uh, machine because, uh, but point is guys, disk is attached to the device, to my laptop, but originally it stores in the storage bay. The storage bay, Data is stored. Personally, it is located in the storage bay. And uh, through network, it is attached here. So I can store the data in this disk. The data stores the remote location. The data stored in the this remote location, not in my local PC. It just attached, just like a your local hard disk. How it is attached? It shows the drives, it works like a normal local device only. Just you can store the data, but originally data is stored in centrally, in a storage bay only. Okay. How to connect? Go to iSCSI initiator, targets, give the target server name and quick connect. So then target server checks what is the storage is assigned for this particular machine. So it will connect automatically. So here this is iSCSI storage. So we are not giving a folder sharing. We are giving directly a block of storage. Okay. Out of, I have a something like a, a 10 terabyte of disk space. Out of 10 terabyte of disk space, I'm giving something like a, a 50 GB or 200 GB or 500 GB to a server or a, a PC. Direct one storage space I'm giving, block of storage I'm giving. That's it is called a block storage. So this is a small information about your, your regular storage, like a SATA PATA, and another storage is SCSI storages. The SCSI small computer system interface, it is an interface to your server. It is an interface to your server. It is nothing but an adapter which we can able to connect different type of storages, different type of devices, and multiple devices we can connect. Multiple devices, not a four, there may be 10, 20 devices also you can connect. So can connect multiple devices, like a SCSI hard disk, SCSI CD-ROM, SCSI printers, SCSI scanners also there. Multiple type of devices we can connect, and multiple devices we can connect it. Multiple devices means 10 hard disks we can connect. Or maybe at, uh, uh, 10 uh, CD-ROMs we can able to connect. We can connect both internal and as well as uh, external also. And SCSI is a hard swappable. Whenever the device is not working or you want to connect a device or disconnect a device, you can connect it. It is a hard swappable. Okay. So earlier days we have this kind of structure that is a, a SCSI. Uh, connectivity is a serial, sorry, parallel type of connection. So earlier, the SCSI interface is a parallel connection, so parallel interface is there. Okay. Now we are getting a iSCSI. iSCSI 
uh, is a directly it is a storage box earlier this adapter is we are inserting into a server so this is iSCSI directly connected to network directly connected to the network the box contains a processor ram and basic uh, operating purpose operating system and application just only for basic uh, connection purpose okay. so internally we have a interface purpose uh, a application or our de default operating system and connectivity tools are there <coughs> and of course there is a processor and ram motherboard everything is there inside of this iSCSI box and we can insert a number of disks depends upon your requirement okay so you want to buy also you can go to some websites to can buy iSCSI um, uh, boxes okay this iSCSI also we can uh, use it for a both NAS type and SAN type of storages and see okay so what is this iSCSI internet SCSI same concept SCSI concept but SCSI is an interface which is we are inserting into the server here it is it's a directly iSCSI is a box which is we can directly connect it to the network we can manage this iSCSI uh, storage and uh, assigning of storage to the different servers or uh, devices uh, we can control through iSCSI software like a target ser uh, storage servers are there so different type of storage servers to manage the iSCSI or you want to convert this iSCSI box for a uh, SAN storages or NAS storages also you can do it it's a, just a storage bay which connects to the network directly okay and how iSCSI, iSCSI will work so there is a some server or a device means server or a computer need a block of storage space like 100 gb 200 gb direct space is required so what admin will do admin create a lun lun logical unit number he create a one storage space iSCSI a storage space is created under iSCSI drives and uh, it is they put a information like uh, this is storage for particular server based on the server name or ip address or iqn name uh, or uh, other uh, things like a mac address like that. whenever the remote machine initiate uh, like uh, uh, connecting to our iSCSI target they will get a disk space automatically so we are giving a block of storage that's it is called a block level storage in aws mainly uh, s3 means it's a, a simple storage service s3 means 3ss simple storage service it is an object level storage it means there is a s3 bucket is there bucket means it's kind of folder s3 is a, a storage space storage just a storage space so there is no drive letters and all it's just a storage space you want to store a data into a certain folder or a, in a folder means it's a grouping so it's like a we create a, a folder called a bucket here inside that one we create a files or you store some data inside the bucket you can create a multiple buckets in a s3 so that is called a object level storage okay that is not object level but it is still uh, S3 is object level storage. My explanation is simple. We create a bucket, we store the data inside a bucket. Simple. Next is EBS, Elastic Block Storage. What is Elastic Block Storage? Is a, it's a iSCSI type of uh, storage. Like you are running a virtual machine or you are uh, required a, a certain block of storages. So what you will do it? You'll create a one you take a one block EBS, you go to EBS services, how much storage you want it, 50 GB or 100 GB or 200 GB. Then you will assign this EBS block to a butler service or a butler machine, butler virtual machine you are connecting. 
Okay, so that's why the words are not a different one. Cold swappable, hard swappable, all day I explain. And this is there. I, I thought I will complete this one also. Okay, sand, nash, torres. I will give you two, three points about it, guys. Then I will finish. Direct attached storage. So there is a storage types. Direct attached storage. NAS network attached storage. SAN storage area network. Okay. In that one, NAS and SAN are centralized storages. NAS and SAN centralized storage. What is DAS? DAS is a direct attached storage. Like you have an internal hard disk. You have a machine. You have a hard disk inside. DAS. You connected an external hard disk. That is also DAS. We are using SCSI type of hard disk. SCSI. The SCSI is attached directly to your server. DAS only. If you are using a SSD. SSD. That is also comes under DAS type only. What is the use of this DAS? Generally, you install your operating system. You store your operating system. You store your applications. Okay, which is directly connected to your it is not a centralized one, it is a local storage. DAS is nothing but a local storage. Direct attached storage is nothing but a local storage or a <coughs> internal storages, your internal hard disk, SSD, SCSI, and your external hard disk also comes under this one. DAS mainly for uh, your internal hard disk or SSD, which is stores operating system and application. It is more isolated, so people are uh, cannot access your data from other PCs without having any specific permissions. So whole depends upon your PC. Next is a NAS, guys. NAS is a network attached storage. So what is a network attached storage? Very simple. I have a certain space, and that one I have uh, some data. I share the data. I share the data. Shared a, a data like this. I shared a data. So I shared this particular folder. So when I open this folder, I can see the data. So as I said, it is a file level storage. It is a file level storage means I can access the folder. I can access the shared folder and I can access the files uh, or whatever it is files in this shared folder I can access directly I'm not attaching any hard disk or uh, uh, drives or nothing I'm not attaching directly I'm accessing files I'm storing files I'm accessing files okay so this is sharing a folder sharing a data through the network through our regular network, our Ethernet only, we are sharing it, right? So this is a, called a NAS. So I want to store my data. I have some data. I want to store in one place. So using NAS, I can store it. I want to access the data from some central PC. And someone like I want to install some application where it is located. Some location. Some space. So it is already shared using some sharing protocols. So like this, NFS, network file system, is a one of the way to share the data. CAFS, common internet file system. In generally, NFS use uh, to share the data between Linux to Linux or Unix to Unix, Unix Linux mixer also we can use it because both you can understand what is the way of working with NFS. CFS is a common internet file system. So meaning is if you have a mixer of uh, kind of stuff like you have Windows and you have a Linux or Unix environment, you can use CFS to share the data, share the printer kind of stuff. What is a NAS guys? Network attached storage. It is a centralized storage. I think I not written, but it is a centralized storage. So it is a file level storage. It is not an enterprise solution. It is easy to configure and cheaper than a SAN. Okay, so we access the direct files. You can store or access the files from NAS 
storage is using a protocol called NFS or CAFS or FTP also I'll work here. Samba, SMB, sharing, all are comes under NAS storage. So there is a storage bay. In the storage bay using a <coughs> storage servers, we create a folder inside. We share the folder so people store the data inside. The NAS storage is. Next one is SAN storage. What is SAN? Storage area network. As compared to DAS and NAS, DAS is a local storage, not central storage. NAS is a central storage. SAN is a centralized storage. It is suitable for enterprise solution. It is enterprise storage solution. It is. Use a fiber optical cables for a high speed data transmission. Okay, high speed data. Don't worry, guys. Entire thing I draw okay, using Google support only, not heavy support. Google don't support much. From this one, this one, this one I use. Okay, uh, okay. so not much easy. So that's a point. Okay, storage area network, high redundancy, high availability is there. High redundancy and high availability storage space. In, in here, in, the, in this one, no high availability or no redundancy here, but this is having redundancy. Why redundant? How redundancy? It follow the mesh topology. Like we take a multiple servers, multiple switches, multiple storage base. We connect each one to everyone. One to everyone we connected. Like you can see there is a FC switch and there is a storage bay. Each bay is connecting to both the switches and each server is connected to both the switches so one wire is down or one server is down one switch is down one storage part is down till we can able to access it so why we acquired a fiber optical fiber opticals data transmission is very high data transmission through fiber optical channel is very high and you know, for example, Google.com, Facebook.com store a lot of data. Normal Ethernet, it's very difficult to transfer the data. So that's why they are using. It is a little complex, costly. Complex, costly. Block level storage, of course. <coughs> NAS is a file level storage. SAN is a block level storage. There is a virtual disk space we create and uh, assign that virtual disk space to the uh, running servers, virtual machines, or uh, to the certain services. Okay, so that's a number we called as a logical unit number. LUNs we are creating. For servers to switch uh, FC switches fabrication, we need an NIC. That NIC, normal we are using Ethernet NICs we are using. Here we are using host bus adapters for fiber channel connectivity. FCOE, fiber channel over Ethernet. Whatever it is internally in the server room, use fiber channel or normal Ethernet, but external communication is always Ethernet communication. So we have to use fiber channel over Ethernet to connect Ethernet network. Okay, yeah. Ride is there. Redundant array of independent disk, inexpensive disk, kind of stuff. Yeah, we cannot finish in a. <coughs> if you want, I will finish in 5, uh, 10, 15 minutes. That much people will ask or not, also, I don't know. But this is a good material. <laughs> what is this ride, guys? Uh, ride having a. It's a combination of. Two or more disk and create a large disk space or a redundancy. Two things. One is big storage space. Second one is redundancy. Okay, so that's it is redundant array of independent disk. So ride level zero called a stripped volume. Ride level zero is a stripped volume. Meaning is two hard disk, two or more disk you can take it. Two or more disks, we can take it. We combine together and we'll get a whole storage. Means, for example, in this one, I have a D drive, one terabyte. 
and I add a one more one terabyte to it, then my D drive become two terabyte of total disk space. So physically, it's a two hard disk. Now logical, it is single disk drive, single D drive only, but two hard disk are there. So this is stripped volume. In this one, one of the disk is failure, total data loss means you cannot access the data again. One disk become offline automatically, you can't access the data. D drive is completely gone. Another level is write level one. So this is we call it as a mirror volume. So in this one, we use only two disk. We don't use two or more. We use only two disk. It's a combination of two disk. It's a single disk failure without parity. It means one of the disk is failure till we can able to access the data. So where is this better option? It is not enterprise solution, but small offices, sensitive computers, you can use it. Write is not a replacement of backup. Backup compulsory you have to take in, but still something your server is down. You went to office. You went to your office. Our, if this is happened to our office also, so we went to the office. And uh, you, are, you are asking, uh, I paid a amount, so I want a bill. Or I want, you want to check the, some previous, uh, uh, some data. They said the hard disk is corrupted. Hard disk is down now. So we are having a backup. We will restore the backup once we fix the hard disk. We restore uh, data from the backup. Then we'll give you the document. Understand the scenario, guys? There's a backup is there. So you went to office, same day only, same day. For example, just five minutes before. Hard disk is down. Hard disk is not working. Hard disk is corrupted. And the guy said hard disk is corrupted. We cannot do anything now. So now we are replacing new hard disk and we restoring a data from the backup. It take at least uh, five, six hours. Come back tomorrow. So then we'll give you the your required document or your required receipt or something. Is it a good for a organization? No, sir. Okay. So backup is important. Backup is important, but also immediate response is also important. You cannot say, yeah, it is down, come back tomorrow. Okay. So usually we'll go to um, ATM centers and all places. They'll tell this kind of stuff. Now it is down. Come back tomorrow. It is. <laughs> uh, it should not be in the organizations. OK, so what we are planning is here. Look at here. We put a two hard disk. And we mirror the hard disk. It means one hard disk. What are the data in the hard disk will be same data in the second hard disk. Both are having same data so that total disk space is not changes. One terabyte plus one terabyte give you one terabyte of storage space only. So what are the data you store? The same data stores in the other hard disk. If one of the disk is failure, still we can able to access the data. But meantime, you have to repair other hard disk. You have to restore into other hard disk or you replace a new hard disk. The new hard disk will get a data. Okay, so you have to store back that one and again you have to configure here and again. The combination of two hard disks, if one hard disk is failure, still we can able to access the data. So total volume size is single volume. One single, one single hard disk volume only you are getting. Two to two terabyte, two plus two terabyte. You got two terabyte only. There is no parity. Parity bits are not there. So I will explain if possible what is parity. So another is write five. Guys, write zero, write zero, write one, write five. These three are a very important. Write six is nothing but a write five only. Only small difference. Write five volume name is write five volume. So write zero is a stripped volume. Write one is a mirror. Write five is a write five volume only. And you 
what is where is this right to right three right four where is this right to right three right four they are also there but it is not implemented for a public use or not much use in the both organization and personal okay that's why there are uh, not here only right by is very important it is enterprise solution minimum 3 disk we should use it minimum of 3 disk we are using so i am taking as a 3 disk only so 3 disk so 3 disk we are using minimum 3 disk so for example you take a 3 disk 1 terabyte plus 1 terabyte plus 1 terabyte the total volume you are getting is only 2 terabyte 2 by 3 of total disk space total disk 2 by 3 of total disk volume you are using it is also single disk failure with parity with parity it means out of three hard disk one disk is failure still we can able to access two disk failure we can able to access the data one disk failure we can able to access the data what is this difference between mirror and raid 5 that is without parity this is with parity what is use of this parity what is parity all our data in a binary system the parity bits is like a, a kind of mechanism it is created from your original data only it is smaller size than a regular data but if your data is written in a one disk the parity bits of the data will store in another disk okay one disk contains a data some data is written one disk contains a file that files parity bits the file related parity bits stores in different disk what is the advantage of this write five and uh, the parity bit kind of mechanism if one of the disk is failure out of three any one of the disk is failure you remove the disk and reinsert the new disk the previous disk data will be regenerated previous disk data like a one disk 1 disk 2 disk 3 third disk got fallen sorry this second disk got fallen second disk got failure or first disk got failure or third disk got failure one disk is failed immediately remove the disk and reinsert the new disk so of course we are using sas kind of stuff disk means scsi type of because scsi based disk right so hard swappable so you remove the disk and reinsert the new disk So now what happened? The previous disk is there. Now, for example, second disk failure. You remove the second one and you insert the new new one in that one. So what are the data in the second disk earlier? The disk the data will be regenerated, regenerated to the new disk. How it is possible? Because of parity bit stored in a other disk. Okay, in a first and third disk having a parity bits of that. parity bits of data in the uh, of of second disk data second disk data as parity bit store in a first and third so it will regenerate the data it regenerate we use it to regenerate data in the second okay. still guys backup is backup backup is more powerful but what is the advantage of using a mirror or right five a kind of stuff it is a faster means user don't you even that's a very important mantra of any service providers server can be down storage can be down service should be available server is down service will be down but what i'm trying to say if server is down service should be available so you have to follow the redundancies high availabilities redundancies high availability Okay, then disk is down, so you cannot able to access the data from the disk. Disk is down, still we can able to access the data, which is more powerful organization. I am providing a service. My server is down. I can't able to provide a service. I can't able to provide a data. I can't able to provide something. So another organization. I am providing a service. i have a data i am providing information i am providing the services now my server is down one of the service my server is down still user is able to access the data 
still able to able to access the services my disk is down still user able to access the data my my network is down still user is able to access the data so how it is possible because of failover and redundancy planning like this one disk failure still user can able to guys only write five only write six is just the extension of write five in write five generally we use three hard disks in write six if you are in a write five if you are using five hard disks in write five if you are using five hard disks it is a write six only it's a two disk failure one disk failure no problem two di another disk is failure then problem will occur so it's a two disk failure one disk failure no problem another disk is also failure Two disk are failure, no problem. Still, user can able to access data. So you'll get a three by five of total disk spaces you can do. And there is a write one zero, write five zero. It's a combination of write one and write zero, and write five and write zero. Uh, successfully, we are completed. Write and uh, your uh, type of storages, dash, NAS, SAN. Just read it once, guys. At least titles. One or two points about it. That's enough. You want to more uh, like a explanation kind of stuff. Already I told there is a one channel like a uh, power set kind of stuff. Uh, this uh, channel contains some animated videos. Actually, this and what is subnet? <laughs> okay. Yeah, including cloud. See RAM, RAM, uh, ride animated, backup animated, SAN NAS. Time storages, NAS storages. Okay, so go through once if you want a uh, small explanation. Means uh, <laughs> what we can say, animated explanation. And go for it. Okay, get to check just you can able to talk about it. And what is the SCSI? What is iSCSI? We discuss what is um, normal hard disk interfaces, SATA, PATA interfaces also. We discuss. Any doubt or anything? I'm stop recording.